Alright folks, I'm just going to do this video real quick. Uh, this is basically a review and double feature pick. Uh, I'm going to be taking on the uh, laughably easy uh, Master Lock 141T. You'll usually see these as school lockers or gym lockers, stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to be taking on the uh, the dreaded master number five. I bought a new one that was sealed. Uh, you may recall from one of my earlier videos, I believe it was actually video number one, I had actually drilled out the rivets in this. Well, I went out and got another one so I could do a proper pick video. Excuse me. Um, so... I've actually got two double features I'm going to be doing. Another one on the Magnum series of locks um, that you can find. And all of these you can find at any Home Depot, uh, mo sometimes Walmart, stuff like that. Uh, they have their own rating system in them. I think this one's like a three or a four or something like that. Um, this one is like, I think they sell this one as a number eight and then so on and so forth. Um, the reality is, is that the cores on all of these suck. Uh, some are brass, you know, bronze, whatever. Um, some are, like the one in this, is literally just copper where the collet's been press fit onto it. Um, so, without further ado, let's get going. We're going to start with the 141. And I'm just going to end up using the same pick for both of these. Whoops. Put it in right. This is in Australia. It doesn't need to be upside down. Sorry, Australia. It's, you know, it's, it's a Northern Hemisphere joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you say the same thing about us. Why are you all upside down? All right. And we're going to take a 15,000th Peterson gem. Um, and we are going to take a, which one do I want? Choices. You can never have enough pry bars. And I will use a Peterson pry bar. I believe that's the correct one. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good fit. All right, let's get cracking on this thing. <laughs> Ooh, oh, okay, it does fit. Uh, now, the keyway on this thing, um, these are good beginner's locks just to get a feel for what warding feels like because the keyways on both of these um, will actually give you some trouble with feedback. Uh, so learning to avoid the warning, you know, it's like the world's smallest game of operation. Uh, you don't want to touch the warding uh, if you can help it. It deadens your feedback and just gives you a ton of problems. So I'm just going to go all the way to the back and I'm just going to drag the tip of my pick. If you're not getting you know, a feel for where the tips of the pins are, why don't you try you know, using a pick that has a sharper tip on the top and you know, just light tension just so you don't move you know, hard you know, anything you're not supposed to. And just lightly, just feel where the tips of all the pins are at. You know, in these locks you should feel one, two, three, four. Um, four pins. So I'm just going to start at the back. And we're going to find the back pin. And kind of, you know, go back and forth over it and just kind of feel where the lowest point on it is, where it's the tip of the pin. You'll typically get better feedback and you'll get better success moving the pin around if you can consistently be pushing in the center of the pin. Uh, you know, as you get more advanced, you'll find that there are locks that don't like that. But for now, let's just apply, you know, medium light tension. I'm just barely starting to engage the spring on the core. And let's just get picking. I got nothing on 3, 2, and 1, and 4 is very solid. It's not even letting me move it. I hope this lock isn't buggered up. That would not be cool. Let me, uh... Wow. 
That pin really doesn't want to move. Huh. I had it locked up too tight. Uh, I need to get a new lock. There we go. Four, three, two. Now see, the click on one felt a little different. It wasn't a solid click. Let's try, uh, see he's oversetting. I think this lock might be buggered up. I'll give it one more try. Three's the only one binding. I'll push up on him. There we go. Nice little click. We'll go to the next pin. Four, nothing. Two. Yep. Core rotation. Three, I just barely touched and it popped. Let's go back and check the other pins. Four seems really high. One still feels. Oh, there we go. I just wasn't going high enough. Um, when you're using top of the keyway tension, a lot of times you'll find the pins that are right here are sometimes hard to set because you'll press on it and you'll think it's nice and solid. But the reality is you're pressing on the under edge of your pry bar, uh, which is uh, kind of eh, kind of difficult. So, I'll have to check this out later and find out why that fourth pin kept hard sticking without even, you know, before I'd even touched it. Uh, certainly wasn't too much tension for it. I wasn't actually applying that much. This one, the number five, alive. We're going to go ahead and we're basically going to do the same way. Now, the QA on this is paracentric. Um, it starts way here on the right. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It starts way here on the right and then curves back across the left and up. Um, you will get, you know, this is a basically a brand spanking new lock. I just bought it today. The edges in here are super rough and they catch the heck out of your, uh, out of your pick. Uh, one pop on one pop on two nothing on three I just grabbed the whole core and pulled it forward okay that works get a pop out of that one another one out of two still nothing out of one and there we go there's a false set there so somebody's somebody's just not quite there they're right on the edge Check that one pin. I'm going to check the two pin. Go back to the three pin. No squish, no mush. Still nothing. So let's reset. Probably overset somebody. Apply a little bit more tension. None of these are security pins. They're all just standard pins. A little pop out of four. A little pop out of two. We'll pop out of one. Always break in your locks <laughs> if you're going to try and do a video. Yep, there we go. There's another little click out of three. Still prying around, trying to find anybody that's going to give me a little bit of feedback. I don't know, there's no security pins in this, so I think the core and the pins are just so radically different, there we go, that it's behaving like a security pin. But we got that one open. 
uh, they're not normally that difficult this is one of the ones that you can actually just kind of zip half the time um, you know, I'll just do let me get a thinner one of these something yeah so we'll just grab that like that and let me grab my number one pin now my last one I could do this on like crazy I don't know if it's gonna be the same on this one just whoop How about something thicker? Right. Just light tension. I'm just basically going in, sticking it behind the back of the fourth pin, and just zipping it forward. It's just a kinetic attack. Let's see if this one will let me do it. The other one was super easy. Depends on the bidding. I think this one has actually pretty good bidding, too. No, I should be able to rake that. Give it a couple more tries here. Whoop. Okay. Diamond, maybe? I want to see if I can get this. Why the heck not? We're only 11 minutes in. I'm not going to spend the rest of the day on it. At any rate, the locks themselves physically, if you're looking for physical protection, master locks are great, you know, and you can buy them just about anywhere. Um, you know, they got some of the best bodies, some of the best shackles in the industry, um, even on their smaller stuff. Uh, but the problem is really the course. Now, there's an ironic thing, and I'm still waiting to get one. There's a lockout tag out. Uh, lock that has a cheap plastic body, non-hardened shackle. The thing's just absolute garbage in this. But ironically, the the lock face uh, or the lock that's in it has security pins and all sorts of crazy stuff going on, uh, and is actually a really kind of challenging lock to get into sometimes. So we can rake it. It's not a big deal. Um, I wish I had a smaller rake sometimes. Should have used my ass up. But there you go. That is the master number five and 141 D or T. I don't remember which one is which. The label says T, but I, I, I don't know. It's one of the two. It's the black one with the metal body. Um, have a good night, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and we will catch you for round two with the Magnum M1 and Magnum M15.